Violence, a simple noun. According to the English Oxford Dictionary, violence is a behavior that involves physical force intended to hurt, damage, or kill someone. However, violence is much more than hurting someone or just a simple noun in a dictionary. Violence is an act of crime and punishable by law. And knowing this, many people still execute it in its worst possible forms. Now here's the point. No matter how educated we are, no matter how advanced humankind is, no matter in what century we live, the act of violence will always be within us if we don't interfere now. Now, first of all, I would like to tell you guys the three main forms of violence. First one is physical violence and the most occurring one. Physical violence is when someone physically beats you, whips you, or tries to hurt you. Emotional violence is when someone verbally abuses you, trying to hurt your feelings. And sexual abuse is, in this case, when an adult is forcing a minor to do sexual activities, such as sexual intercourse. Now, why am I specializing this presentation on Cambodia? Is it because it occurs here a lot? No. In order for our society to make a change, we need to start small. We need to start making a change in our community right here and right now. And violence is not something that occurs to a specific group of people at a specific time. And it occurs everywhere, in every single culture under any possible circumstance to anyone and everywhere. Now, looking at a study units have conducted in 2013, where they interviewed 2,376 students, I mean children, 50% of them said that they were physically abused. 25 said that they were emotionally abused, and 5% said sexually. Now, looking at a scale, at a global scale, where the children that have been interviewed all range from the age of 13 to 24, and the population in Cambodia of that specific age group equals 1.7 million. And if I'm doing my math correctly, those victims of sexual abuse in Cambodia equal to 85,000 children annually. Now, who are those perpetrators that do these kind of things to those people? I myself ask ISPP students, and most of them, well, over 75% said that it's usually someone within the family. It is someone they trust. And looking at UNICEF's point of view, it is true. The, usually the perpetrators are someone within the family, within the community. It could be anyone they know. But most importantly, it is someone usually that they trust. Why? Because those perpetrators are using their trust, are using this specific trait for their own benefit. Now, personally, family for me means love and security, safety. But for those thousands of children in Cambodia, it doesn't mean the same thing. They're scared of their everyday life, of the people that surround them. And according to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Every single human being has the right to a life, to safety, and to liberty. Now, in the same survey they conducted, they asked those same people, how do you feel about violence? What has been going through your mind? And their responses were devastating. They were heartbreaking. They said that they're ashamed of the things that happened to them, and they're embarrassed. They're scared that their family and their friends might not want to be there anymore for them because of what happened to them. Now, do they think this because we, are, we don't know what to do next, or because they think that we have a selfish and judgmental society? I myself believe that both of these points are true. 
Yes, every single human being has their own opinion, and every single human being puts themselves first. But also, having asked the same question to an expert, Dr. Maya, who's working at the National Hospital in Phnom Penh, she said that we, as a society, as a community, are not educated enough about this topic, and therefore we can't really approach this the, in the right way. Now, I again talked, not talked, but I conducted the same survey, and here the same thing is, what would you do if you found out that your friend suffers under violence attacks? Now, 60% of the ISPP students said they would do nothing. Nothing. Now here's the point. Do they mean nothing by, I don't know what to do? Or is it nothing, I'm scared and I don't, I just can't handle it? Now, this goes back to the point that the expert, Dr. Maya, said. We are not educated enough about this topic. We don't know how to approach it the right way. The people, the victims, have to willingly open up to us. And in order to do this, they need to feel loved and safe. Now, the statement, what children see, they do. Yes, if my math teacher tells me how to solve an equation, I would follow it. I would follow his steps, I would follow his method, and this is no different in this topic. The perpetrators usually themselves have had some sort of violence or abusive backgrounds. Usually, they themselves went through the same process, the same vicious cycle. It's Every single thing we do, every single action we take, always has a reason behind it. And this is no difference in this topic. Let's say I learned how to ride a bicycle at the age of six in my childhood. And when I'm 72, of course, I will still know how to ride a bicycle. Maybe not that well, but still. And the same thing applies to here. What you see and what you do in your childhood, what your family, what your community, what your culture shows you, you will most obviously, or most you will execute it in your, adult, in your adult life, too. Now, what do we have to do now? Violence most obviously leaves visible marks, bruises and scars that will maybe fade, maybe not. But there are also invisible traits, such as depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, and even attempts. There are all consequences of this. Now, the main factor of these, of these things is that they do not feel the sense of community and they do not they can't really open up to us and this leads to post traumatic trauma it destroys their future and most importantly it affects their academics and their social life now since this is such a huge topic ngos and organizations have thought about how to prevent this, came up with methods and strategies. But one thing they all have in common is they all want and need to change the attitudes of both the victim, the perpetrator, but most importantly, the societies. In order for both of them, the perpetrator and the victim, to open up to us, they need to feel loved, they need to feel a sense of community. Now, there are many different types of people. There are visual learners and audiovisual learners. And when opening up to someone, it's not that much different. Some people prefer face-to-face -face talks, but some of them don't. And therefore, NGOs and organizations have come up with another idea, another strategy, in order to help them. Child Helpline Cambodia, for example, allows victims to call them, and they talk through everything on a phone with an expert. Now, I'm not gonna lie. Violence is something that we need to face right now in order for us to create a hopeful future for everyone. The scars that you will get, that the victims get during, those, during that time period where they suffer under violence, they will soon fade. But the memories, they will never fade. They will haunt them like a shadow and they can't let it go because it's within them. In order for us to create a hopeful future for everyone, silence about this topic needs to be broken, 
attitudes of people needs to be changed in order for the Cambodian kids to live the life they deserve and give them the life they deserve. Thank you.